Hello, this is the AVIT department, Westminster Computer Lab. Uh, Today is just a very brief uh, introduction to a very um, um, useful um, audio recording tool called Audacity. Um, we're just going to today show you how you could uh, do a simple commercial. Uh, it's not too fancy, we can get fancy <laughs> later on, but just just to sort of show you how easy it is to use this uh, this um, audio editor. It's amazing. Uh, it's also available in Windows and Mac operating systems as well. That's how um, popular it is. Uh, to launch it, uh, to launch Audacity, um, you go to the main menu, uh, you go to sound and video, and you click on Audacity. The interesting thing is a lot of people when they think about open source software, they immediately think of tools like OpenOffice, maybe Firefox, GIMP, um, but the other ones are starting to come up now but people may not be aware of them and Audacity um, are one of these type of tools. Let's click on OK and before we proceed uh, it's important to make sure um, that you have a microphone plugged in. Now we're going to use the webcam, the same thing I'm talking into right now. Um, so if, um, if you're not certain you should always go to main menu, you should go to preferences, you should go to sound, you should go to input, and just confirm that we're using the actual webcam. And as you're talking, you should see that my level is being recorded. In fact, it would have been on webcam anyways because I wouldn't be able to talk to you right now um, uh, in this uh, YouTube video if I wasn't able to. Uh, now we can do some interesting things, uh, and there are very, very uh, many things that we can do. Um, for example, I may want to have a little bit of background music um, in my uh, commercial. So I'm going to pick up some um, music. Now, be very, very careful here. Remember, I'm using. Remember, I'm always mentioning common sense here. Uh, you should not be using any material that's copyrighted uh, without the permission of the owner. Um, there are resources like Open Domain so uh, Music. Uh, public domain music uh, sites that offer music. Um, another suggestion is we're very, very talented and blessed here at the church uh, to have great uh, musical performers. Uh, so therefore, if you don't want to run the risk of uh, copyright infringement, why not um, generate your own music? Um, this is what's happening with my friend right now that's producing the background music that you're hearing for this tutorial. And I had mentioned to him that I'm so pleased with this. Would he be interested in making some more free background music for perhaps some other videos I'm doing? And he's absolutely positively pleased. So it's kind of a win-win situation. Okay, well anyways, I'm going to go to File. I'm going to open, and remember a place for everything and everything in its place. Under music, I've created a subdirectory called my commercial, and in it has uh, the background music. And it's loading it in, and this represents a sound wave of the song. If I wanted to extend it, I could just click here in this region, click, say edit, copy, and these are called transport controls. Uh, I can literally say now go to the end of the recording and you may notice that the focus has been placed at the end and simply say edit, paste. And I don't know if you see this but I've now pasted in the same song. This is what I do in my videos because obviously the videos, last, some of them last longer than the actual songs so I just keep on looping it again and again and again. I make one very large um, piece of background music. I'm not trying to get fancy, I'm not trying to overdo it, I'm just trying to do stuff quick and simple and get the, get the message out and have it look reasonably okay with the idea being that if I can do this, anybody can do this. Um, um, there are a lot of uh, tools that you can use here. One would be to select the area and go to effects. There are so many effects here it's not even funny. Um, amplification, compression, so much here. I'm going to go to amplify and I'm just going to allow for clipping and reduce the sound wave. So if I click on OK you should notice now that it's really soft here. Maybe it's too soft, I don't know. If worse comes to worse, you can always undo the amplify that you did. Let's click to go to the beginning and let's listen to it here. It's 
pretty pretty quiet there. Let me make it a little bit louder. So I'm going to say edit, undo amplify. Now another way that I can play around with the sound is I could actually slide the gain and that's another way so I don't have to select the amplification I can actually just uh, slide the volume and I can click and drag to play around with it does this so sound, song sound familiar? <laughs> If you've been listening to the YouTubes, you'd say yes. Okay, uh, the next thing I want to do is record my voice. So this just acts like a multi-track tape recorder. Anytime I want to add in something, I add it in. So I just click on record. Hello, this is Murray Saul. I'm happy that you're here at Westminster United Church. Happy to see you today. Let's stop it. Rewind. Hello, this is Murray Sowell. I'm happy that you're here. Folks, it's just as easy as that. Now you have the ability to uh, go to any particular place and start recording um, segments. Maybe you don't want to talk for the entire 16 minutes and you want to break it down to smaller elements. Now you can add in tracks for separate elements or, or uh, public domain sound effects. Um, the, uh, uh, it's just that easy. And is it any wonder that um, although a lot of uh, recording artists um, have the fancy stuff, even some of the fanciest recording artists sometimes use Audacity because it's a quick and efficient way just to get something out there, like a commercial. The last thing that I want to just uh, demonstrate today is to show you how easy it is to actually uh, convert this down into an MP3. There are many different file formats. You would go to File. You should save this first, so save Project As. You should always save this in the native file format. Why? Because um, it's always good to keep the work that you've done, and you may want to play around with the volume, the mixes, make some editing changes. And so always, 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 regardless of what type of thing that you're doing, whether it's shooting videos, whether it's doing music, always keep your work. And a lot of this ties in together now because I have a YouTube video on how to use Gnome Baker and you're saying, well, I have all this material, Murray, I don't want to, but you've been teaching me about file management, everything, a place for everything and everything in its place. Where do I put it? Because I don't want to be a messy, messy. Well, burn it into a CD and burn it into a DVD uh, and store it off site for later use. Very wise people I've been in seminars indicate never, ever, ever throw anything out. That's a, that's, that comes from... Uh, the top people here. So I can just make sure that I'm in my home directory teacher under music, under my commercial, and save it. And I'll create a, uh, a uh, subdirectory with the data that's in it and, uh, and, uh, and the file that links to this. But to create an MP3, what I can do is the following. I could say file, I could say export. What do I want to export it to? There's many, many different types of uh, um, uh, file formats, but one that's quite popular is mp3. Just give it a name like uh, my commercial. And it has things here for tags. These are the things that would show up when you're um, playing on a, um, oh, a, a media player. A great way of, uh, of um, advertising. So I could say here, um, I don't know, AVIT. Department uh, commercial demo and things uh, a lot of information here. I'm just going to be happy with that. Click OK, and now we'll start to go through the process of uh, encoding it. And even though there's two back-to-back -back songs here, with and then just a small blip with my voices, this is exporting it very very quickly so it'll be no time at all although my example is quite incomplete it's done so now what I can do is I can uh, remember for document centric now all I have to do is open up music my commercial there is my native file for the um, commercial that I did and the data files that are associated with it, the different audio tracks. 
And here's the MP3 that I just cut. Just as a matter of interest, in uh, Ubuntu Linux, they have some neat feature. It's neat, but it can be a little annoying. The neat feature is I can actually just point onto the icon. See the little play sign here? It's playing. So in a kind of a cool way, I could listen to what I did without actually having to launch the application or double click on the document centric um, file to launch an application and play it. I'm going to launch it though just for the fun of it. So I point and double click. And now you'll notice that it's playing in this application. If it's something like Windows Media, uh, Media Player, if this was on the net, uh, then it would provide information regarding that it's the ABIT department and it's a sample demo. This is the ABIT department, uh, just trying to show you a quick and simple way to start to record your works of art.